Hi, this is Paul from Outer Loop Coaching and OuterloopCoaching.com. Today, I want to talk about how to submit your music to radio. How are you going to get your songs played, your big hit single played on radio? This is a big question people have been asking for a very, very long time, and I've got some specific strategies how to do it, including how to get on satellite radio, but I'm going to save that one to the end. Please like and hit the alert button and subscribe and do me a favor, comment down below. Let me know, is radio something that matters to you? Is it something that you've got in your strategy overall for your band? Put it down below. I'd love to hear and uh, yeah, love to hear what you think. I'd love to hear what you are focusing your uh, energies on and whether radio is a part of it. Okay, let's start real quick. There are four types of radio. Each one is very different from the last. The first type of radio is commercial terrestrial radio. This is your local radio station plays in the city that you're nearest uh, 95.5 you know 101.1 you know stuff like that those in the middle of the um, radio range uh, those are the radio stations commercial radio stations you hear the ads in between songs and those are the uh, those are the uh, a pretty a difficult but also very very rewarding station to get onto in your market if you can do it that's one that we're going to talk about second that we're going to talk about of course is satellite radio this has become massive satellite radio will play throughout the entire country or continent and it's Sirius XM that's pretty much the whole enchilada they're the only ones who really do it so that's one of them there's online radio which I'll combine a little bit with that uh, satellite radio thing it's a slightly different thing because there's so many different online radio stations some are public some are commercial and all sort of things so it's sort of a blend among all of them okay you've got college radio college radio still can make a big difference depending on how many watts meaning how strong the single uh, signal is from that radio station uh, how much a part of the local community especially the college campus community that college radio station might be some college radio stations can almost compete with commercial radio stations for their influence and the way that they are able to turn people on to new artists, new songs, and um, a lot of them don't. So got to be aware of it. And then the last one is public radio, similar to college radio. Oftentimes, uh, and there are not very many of these left anymore, it's a nonprofit station and usually with low wattage, sometimes even on the AM uh, side of the dial, run by volunteers uh, or very, 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 very low paid people who just do it because they love the music. And then there's of course WFMU, if you're in the United States, check out WFMU.org on, uh, online. Or if you're in the New York, New Jersey radio, this is the best public radio station in the country. Uh, you got to check it out. Okay, um, so those are the four uh, sort of commercial types of radio with online radio being sort of a blend of all of them uh, as far as in, in the context of what we're talking about today. But there are two types of radio that matter to you. There's the radio station that has an audience and then there's the radio station that does not have much of an audience. So those are the two that really matter. All right, so let's talk first about public and college radio. What's interesting about public and college radio is that usually the, and, and this is always generalizations, but usually the schedule on a public radio station or a college radio station is broken up into individual shows rather than a long format that might even last all day and all night every day of the week, right? So uh, uh, you might have an hour long programs, two hour long programs, three hour long programs. They're usually run by volunteers and those individual hosts are programming their shows themselves. There's good and bad with this. They're a little bit easier to get to. They don't necessarily have the same kind of influence, uh, but they can also offer some great opportunities for interviews and things like that, especially when you're on tour and you're looking for ways to uh, keep the band active while on the road, keep getting the word out, trying to turn on new people. It's a great way to do it. But you can approach the host of these shows generally with with an email and I've got another video that tells you exactly what is the best way to format an email so check that out I should have the link up above my head somewhere right so 
when you send an email to one of these uh, hosts, what you want to do is you want to include a link to your EPK, your electronic press kit. Your EPK should have a bio, should have images, should have video, should have uh, oh, all sorts of things. And I've got another video somewhere. Maybe it's over my head with a link on what all should be in your EPK. So include the link to your EPK. You also want to include a link and not an attachment, a link to an MP3. That MP3 might be in your, um, uh, e uh, that MP3 link might be in your EPK. In fact, it probably should be. But if you can include a direct link to that MP3, it's going to make it easier for them. And we'll also let them know specifically which song it is that you are pitching them on programming onto their show. Uh, what else am I forgetting? Um, uh, you need to do the radio. Oh, Tell them what other radio stations are playing your music. What other, uh, especially if it's uh, uh, other radio stations that you've got uh, that have some sort of reputation, especially in the radio industry. But hey, just hit them up with a list. Keep track, you know, of all the radio stations that are playing your song or playing your music and make sure you reference that in your email. No, <laughs> almost nobody wants to be the maverick taking a chance on you. Everybody wants to catch up. They want to find out or believe, be led to believe that they need to work hard to catch up with all the other radio stations to make sure that they're playing. So include that in your pitch. And uh, so, yes, I was talking also about how you got to pitch them on uh, trying to get interviews when you're on tour. I loved doing this as a touring musician for a number of different reasons. The, the one is that you are developing relationships with the people at these public and commercial, uh, I'm sorry, public and uh, college radio stations. And guess what? These people are passionate about music and they oftentimes will go on through the rest of their career to stay in the music industry, whether it's in radio or in some other capacity. So developing re relationships early on when they're just a college student, they're just a volunteer is going to pay off in huge for you and your band when they later on become the CEO of a major record label. And I promise you, Almost everybody who's somebody in the record industry, so many of them had at some point spent some time in college radio because they're music lovers. What other way can you do it, right? Um, so that was one thing that I loved about doing it. Second thing I loved about doing it was that it was able to generate a little bit of momentum for the gig. You might get a handful of people. You might get just a few who would show up to the gig because they heard you on the radio earlier that day or the day before on the phone, or, or, you know, that sort of thing. That stuff's really cool. It also gives you a chance to kind of uh, uh, get the, uh, the song played after the interview and you're getting your music out there. Every time you get a chance to do that, it's a good, good thing. It starts buzz when you've got a good sized co uh, college or public radio station, you can generate some buzz and you don't know where the buzz is going to come from. You don't know where it is, uh, who in the audience is going to be the person who's going to talk them up, uh, talk you up to all their friends. But again, this is a community of music lovers. You want to get in there and that's going to be really helpful to you when you're touring, when you're trying to promote something, right? And the last thing that I really loved about doing the interviews is actually kind of like a, it's an ooey gooey thing. When I had musicians on the road, I wanted us all to feel like we were working. We were always, you keep your bandmates out of trouble when you got to get to the radio station early. You let your promoter know that you're working your butt off to try to make the best for that show. And you are uh, uh, you're keeping everybody moving forward, keeping f everybody with the vision of, hey, we're working hard for the band while we're on the road. We're not working hard for uh, some time at the beach or go see some, do some sightseeing or we're just gonna sleep in, you know, stuff like that. There's a time and place for it, absolutely. And I'm sure my former bandmates will tell you that I ran them ragged with stuff like this. But I, for myself, always loved working and letting everybody in the band know that we were all working to the same goal and doing interviews on the road whenever possible was just part of it. Okay, so that wraps up college and public radio. If you have any questions on that, on those kinds of stations, put them down below. Uh, next thing is commercial radio stations. 
This is a much, much more challenging place to get your, your radio, uh, get your music onto the radio. But it's extremely important. Even now, when people are spending most of their time in their cars, listening to Spotify app and uh, you know their Apple, uh, uh, Apple Music and, and the other apps, and they're listening to specifically what it is that they want to hear and not music, but there's still a ton of people who listen to commercial radio in your market, I promise you. And while it doesn't break new artists like it may have 15, 20, 25, 50 years ago, it still does it still does. It still does every once in a while. There's still artists who break out a commercial radio. So if you can get into your popular uh, uh, commercial radio station in your market, it can be absolutely huge for your career in that market. And if you can add on additional markets that you are making huge uh, impact on those radio stations, maybe even becoming part of their um, uh, their A list of songs that are playing all day long, that's going to be huge for you in that market. And so you're able to focus market by market with this kind of strategy. You don't have to just go out and be worried about how do we, you know, Spotify. How do we get a million spins on Spotify? Well, that's a very different kind of strategy to how do we get on this radio station and that market in order to draw hundreds, thousands of people to our next gig. And so commercial radio has got a huge uh, impact on their community. It's definitely something I believe that if you have the type of music, you have a great single that you think can compete with the best and be able to turn people on and turn music directors on at commercial radio, this absolutely should be something that you're trying to do. Okay, so how do you get onto a commercial radio station? The truth of the matter is, is that you need a personal connection to get on there. You can send emails if you want, but I've never heard of anybody getting onto a commercial radio station from sending an email or making a cold call to the station. It almost always comes from a personal connection. And if it's the radio station in your market, you got a responsibility to network your way to find and make those personal connections with the music director, the show hosts, and anybody who's important on that radio station. Now the show hosts will not have much, if any, control over what they play on the air, but they can introduce you to a music to the music director. They, that's the boss, right? So they can absolutely make that uh, that pitch for you. They can be the one who makes that personal connection for you. All right. So um, uh, music director, yes, music director is the person that you got to get to. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. I don't want to forget anything. Um, uh, use an experienced music publicist, especially if it's somebody outside of your market and it's not somebody that uh, you, you're going to have the chance to make that personal connection with. You don't have the energy or the resources to do the networking that you need to do in order to get to a music director in a market hire a music experienced music publicist to get you there. You want somebody who's experienced not only in getting on the blogs, getting into magazines, getting in. They should have relationships already with that radio station because of stuff they've done in the past. So when you're talking to your music publicists that you're talking to about working, if there are radio stations that you want to get on, ask them, have you ever gotten music on those stations? Do you have any connections at these radio stations? And be specific. It's okay if they say no, maybe they still think they can do it for you and that's okay. But more often than not, if they say no, you know what? Try to find somebody who does. It's a real challenging, challenging thing to do. So if you're going to spend the money, you better be getting uh, something for your money. You want to be on the same page as to what it is that they're going to be capable of delivering. Not what they're going to deliver, but what they're capable of delivering. All right. Uh, so when once if you've made that personal connection, follow up with them with your EPK. Same sort of thing like what you do when you send to your college radio stations, your public radio stations. You definitely want to include uh, the link to the EPK, the link to the MP3. You want to include the list of other radio stations that you are on. All that is valid, but I got one additional thing you definitely want to include, and that is your Spotify numbers. Unfortunately, commercial radio, they are not the horse dragging the cart. They are the cart, right? Spotify is the horse. 
If you have significant Spotify numbers, you have to include them in that email. And if you don't, you gotta find some way to increase those numbers and find some way to reconfigure it. You know, like, oh, we've had a 65% jump in the last 30 days and it better be more than from 100, and 100 listens to 165 listens. You know what I'm saying? But if you, almost every commercial radio station nowadays wants to see that you are getting traction with an audience online before they will let you get onto their airwaves. It's just the way it is. Uh, and I think uh, that, uh, oh, niche shows, there, are, there might be uh, on your local commercial radio station, there might be like the local music hour, or they could be, a, if you're a folk band, you know, the folk hour, you know, things like that. Be careful with these. If your goal is to get on to the, the you know, 24 seven, the regular format of the show, I would discourage you from pitching to the niche shows. But if you think that that local music hour, for example, has an audience that can make a difference for you, then absolutely pitch it to them. The problem is, is that once you are pigeonholed as a local artist or as a niche artist, it's really hard to get your way out of that pigeonhole. So be careful of it. If you are going to get on into that pigeonhole, you have to dominate your niche. You have to dominate your local market for the radio station to then take you seriously and put you into regular programming, right? So that is one of the things you want to be careful with. If you have your sights modestly set, then yeah, absolutely. If you think that show has an audience and, and maybe the host you've got a relationship with and it's an easy game give or it's a host that you want to develop a relationship with in order to move things forward in other ways with your career. Okay, that's a good way to do it. But if it if you have your sights bigger, if you want to be huge, you want if you're thinking arenas and huge theaters in your local market, rather than being able to just, you know, half sell out your local, uh, uh, you know, 150 seat uh, bar <laughs> with a couple great local openers, that's as good as you want it to be, then I would, I, I would, uh, if, if then, you know, the niche show will work if that's how modest your, your sites are set. But when you're set for some Thing bigger and you really want to do huge do huge numbers avoid it just avoid right, it so I promised okay. I'd talk to you about satellite radio and how to get your stuff on satellite radio this is the question for you how vital how important is satellite radio to you and to your career? If you think it is crucial, then I'm going to tell you specifically what you need to do to get your st stuff onto satellite radio, to get your hit single onto satellite radio. And if you don't have these steps in your uh, uh, strategy, as to what you want to have happen for your career, there's a fairly good chance that satellite radio is not going to be the way for you. And so let's talk about what you need in order to get on satellite radio. What you need is like 99.9% .9 of all the artists that you will hear on satellite radio, they are signed artists on record labels. So. Be prepared. In order to get on satellite radio, the first prerequisite is going to be a signed artist just like everybody else on satellite radio. The second thing that you'll need to do, and it's either in addition to or instead of, you need to get management who has other artists on satellite radio. Same thing with the record label. You can't just sign with any record label. It has to be a record label that does have artists on satellite radio. They know how to do it because they've done it before. They know how to do it because they've built the relationships with satellite radio to make it happen. Personal relationships with satellite radio hosts and the programmers are absolutely critical. They're just not going to play you based on an email. They're not going to play you just based on a cold call. They are being inundated with requests from 
signed artists, let alone unsigned artists, to get their stuff played on satellite because satellite has now become so important to so many artists' careers. So, signed, get signed, and make those personal relationships or have the personal relationships through the people that you are working with to get onto satellite radio. And, uh, a, an experienced radio publicist again with uh, other artists either in their recent past or currently that they've pitched a satellite radio that they've gotten on there that's another crucial part of that team but you can you, they, they are going to be totally secondary to the label and or management go with a radio publicist that is recommended by your management and or record label and that is just about the only way to get your stuff on satellite radio. There are exceptions. There are artists who have hit the lottery, but it's just not a good investment, right? Lottery is never a good investment. So figure out a strategy. Just look at other artists and how they've done it. That's how you can do it. That's the easiest. That's the best way to have to uh, have it happen for you. That's all I got. That's how to get on the radio. I hope you've appreciated the video. Please let me know with the like. Let me know with the uh, uh, comments down below. Hit the little bell for alerts. Make sure you subscribe. And this is Paul from Our Loop Coaching and OurLoopCoaching.com. Be sure to subscribe to our email list. You'll get tons of stuff nearly every day. Great advice. So uh, I'll look forward to uh, seeing you on the next video. Thank you very much.